Every wrong is recorded. Every slight against us. Page after page, etched in blood. Hello, this is James from Games Raider, and I'm here with Matthew Elliott, who has reviewed Total War Warhammer for us. Hello, Matt. Hello, you're right. Yes, thank you very much. Now, this is something that you're very much involved with. You love a bit of Warhammer. I do like you a love little a bit, bit of strategy. Of, yeah. Yeah. So this is right up your street. What does Warhammer bring to like the Total War franchise? Uh, I think first and foremost, it's uh, it's probably the best Total War game for for quite some time. It is, I mean, it does all the same stuff that Total War games do. Um, it's just a little bit more refined, a bit more thoughtful about it, and things like sort of diplomacy and stuff like that. That's stuff that's always been part of the Total War world. It's kind of it's it's streamlined them and made them a little bit more sensible. So you feel like you're you're in this world that is actually real it's there and you're kind of part of this big sort of urgent campaign that's driving towards like a quite defined end goal um and then i think on top of that you know you've got a fantastic version of total war on top of that you've got this um incredibly rich detailed fantasy world in warhammer that's it's got you know years and years and years of fluff behind it and books and sort of expanded universe stuff as well as all the you know the actual game itself obviously so you think for people who've played warhammer before there's a lot in there that they'll be familiar with. Um, I, th I think that's a, it's kind of an interesting proposition, I think, because people who play Warhammer um, are probably going to have a slightly harder time of it than people who've just played Total War. Right. So I think if you play Warhammer and you, uh, and you just want to see it brought to life, this is absolutely where you go. This is, it's, it's a game that sort of fleshes out that, that really kind of interesting, detailed, high fantasy world in quite a, a smart, comprehensive way. And it's just it's full of detail. It's really lovingly made. But you are going to have to learn how to play Total War, which is, I mean, like any time you say learn in the context of a game, mm. you've probably got a bit of a problem. Um, but I think it does a good enough job of doing it. So you, it's going to take you like a couple of hours to, to really get to grips with sort of going around this world and learning how Total War works. Because it's got all sorts of things like the way that kind of tech trees work and buildings and stuff like that. In the same way that you, any time you pick up any new strategy game, mm. there's going to be elements of it that don't feel immediately intuitive. And even for me as a guy that played lots of Medieval 2, which is one of the really kind of older Total War games, there's stuff here that feels like, how does that work? You know, it takes a little bit of time to get into it. When it does, it's worth it and it's brilliant. Awesome. But once you do get into it, all of the things that you'd expect to be there are in there. So the factions are in there? There are. I mean, it's, it's kind of a snapshot of a particular part of the Warhammer world. So you have four factions off the bat, five if you've pre-ordered or if you buy it in the first week, because then you get chaos as well. Um, so you've got dwarfs, you've got vampires, you've got the Empire, you've got the Greenskins, which is one particular faction in the kind of orc mm -hmm. tribe. So there's other ones as well. And you have chaos if you've, if, if you've pre-ordered. So uh, there's no elves, there's no skavens, there's, skaven, there's no ogres. Um, they're kind of all part of like a wider world. But there's... The, the thing to, to bear in mind there is that those four or five factions are all really, really different. In the way that old Total War games all had quite similar factions in different parts of the world, mm. these all play really, really differently. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and that is part of the beauty of it, I think. It's very much a choice of choosing your side then rather than going, I want to be that army in that place. Yeah, to a point, yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's all kind of broken up in, in terms in the, in the maps. So the dwarves live in the kind of mountain strongholds mm -hmm. and the, the orcs live in the south and the emperor further off to the... Mm -hmm further off to the uh, east. Um, and But yeah, your choice should probably be dominated by what kind of army you want to play. So if you want to play defensively, if you want to have loads of artillery, then you pick dwarves. If you want to have loads and loads of really cheap units that, that run away easily, but you get access to stuff like kind of goblin catapults and giants and stuff, then you play as the orcs. So, so the thing that Total War is all about then is the battles. In the Warhammer universe that this is set in are they as impressive as they have been before uh they're they're crazy yeah they're it's like it's i said in the review it's kind of like um controlling at the you know the, the sort of battle of pelinor and in, in lord of the rings you kind of the scale of them is sort of staggering if you're playing on a good pc and you kind of up the unit size um i, I certainly found myself just pausing every kind of three minutes taking the hood off and just going and zooming in and sort mm. of seeing the action it's not flawless um, because these things never are. I think we saw preview videos earlier on of kind of these immaculate charges of sort of cavalry towards perfect lines and stuff. It all gets messy quite quickly, but it still looks brilliant. You've got, you know, any time when you've got a game where you're, you know, you're firing cannon at giants as they sort of lumber across the field and you've got like giant bats and dragons and stuff fighting in the, the sky above you and helicopters dropping bombs and stuff. It's, it's so dense and full of stuff um but it's, it's you know it's an amazing spectacle and it's a battle right so you'd expect things to get messy pretty quickly yeah i mean that's part of the joy yeah exactly. yeah definitely so campaign wise then how does that work in the grand scheme of things um i think the campaign's probably my favorite thing about it, it, it like it's a little bit different from total war campaigns 
normally because you do have some kind of a goal, but you're kind of basically your goal is just conquest. But with this, there's like a story element layered into it. So you're getting certain sort of items along the way and you're sending heroes on adventures and stuff. And part of your victory condition will probably be to wipe out a certain faction. But then you've got this kind of um, curveball thrown in of, of the kind of forces of chaos who are kind of a bit like, yeah, sort of you imagine like the kind of... Um, the Mongol hordes from history or like the Dothraki from Game of Thrones, you've got this sort of amazing kind of horde that will invade at some point um, and just totally turn the campaign on its head. And that kind of forces you to act differently. And this is where the diplomacy that I was talking about earlier, that's where it comes in, in, in that it's quite a complex thing. You find that when a more powerful force is threatening you, then people that you were previously at war with will make peace and things like that. So it's quite a, it feels like quite a good real world because of that. And, that, and that's your kind of ultimate goal is just to weather that storm, ultimately defeat it and kind of return whichever power you choose to its former glory and if you are really familiar with the warhammer history and law and things there's things in there for those kind of players as well like the legendary lords are in there oh gosh yeah absolutely um yeah the the legendary lord thing is is you know it's full of instantly recognizable characters and characters that really kind of you know are, are sort of fundamental to the warhammer world that have been around for quite a long time and it's kind of set at a certain period of, of history in the warhammer world as well that's that's particularly interesting it's a little bit sort of woolly exactly when it when it's set but you've got characters in there that you kind of hold kind of editions of Warhammer are built on these people clashing and fighting each other and stuff so yeah it's it's kind of a it feels like a labor of love for the people that made it and if, if you like Warhammer um, you can just spend hours reading all the, the gubbins in it and stuff it's a hugely detailed game well I know you do like Warhammer so that's good uh, if overall verdict and score then um, I gave it a 4.5 I absolutely love it. Um, it it's it's kind of for, for the sort of the frustrations that come with playing a campaign and when you sort of lose buildings and stuff and you, you, you know, you're forced to go backwards, um, I think that's kind of inevitable with, with any strategy game. So there's always going to be a degree of repetition and there's always going to be a degree of like, well, I've lost this and now I'm annoyed. But I think it weathers that stuff really, really well. I think it's incredibly lovingly crafted. And to us, I don't know what else I could have asked for from a, from a game of this type. It's two things that I really love put together and done incredibly well. Brilliant. Well, that's 4.5 out of 5 then, our Games Radar score. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to come back for more news reviews, previews and features right here on Games Radar Plus. The Urks must pay. Let them come.